when introducing to complain a lot despite being given the freedom to play life on easy mode. Most homeless individuals are in fact men. Men are far more likely to be assaulted, murdered, and incarcerated, especially since women are almost never held accountable for their actions. Men are often forced into military service and at the very least, must register for the draft. Women, despite infiltrating the armed forces, wherein they receive the prestige associated with service, almost never perform truly dangerous jobs and are very frequently allowed to enter positions without meeting the predetermined standards. The prevalence of men dying from prostate cancer is three times higher than women who die from breast cancer. But all we hear about are women's issues. Try finding a dedicated men's clinic or other resources only for men. Men are also more likely to die by suicide and do not live as long as women who significantly outnumber them in nursing homes or assisted living facilities where they receive ongoing care. Most advanced degrees are now earned by women who enjoy vast support in the form of grants and scholarships and have quite literally driven males away from higher education. Women, in fact, are now often earning higher salaries than men and the wage earnings gap myth has been debunked so many times the debate is just getting old at this point. Laws governing divorce and the family courts are completely biased against men. It's almost always a woman who files for divorce, as well as frequently lies about the reasons for doing so, which may include false allegations of abuse to avoid judgment and maintain control of the children, because you know, child support. The fact is that women are the individuals most often abusing children, not men. Women can choose to kill a man's unborn child via abortion and the child's father cannot do a thing about it. Yet, if a woman decides to have a child, she can force a man to support the child even when it's not his. The prevalence of paternity fraud is staggering, and in many cases, men have been ordered by the court to continue financially supporting children even after DNA results have proven they are not the biological father. Why do you think paternity testing has been outlawed in France? When women are caught committing paternity fraud, which often ruins a man's life, they are never held accountable. Men in general suffer from birth to death and are expected to always work. In spite of women, in many cases now earning more money, they still demand that men pay for dates, vacations, gifts, an expensive engagement ring, outlandish weddings, and ultimately fund the lavish lifestyle they somehow deserve despite offering virtually nothing in return. Men often lead lives of quiet desperation since they are taught to be strong and silent. When men do assert themselves or exhibit vulnerability, they are promptly shamed by society and labeled as toxic misogynists. Men do virtually all of the necessary and dangerous jobs that maintain our infrastructure. Without men, our society would literally collapse within days, but modern women would like everyone to believe they don't need men. Women enjoy the freedom to be a stay-at-home mother or boss babe. They can also, and frequently do leave the workforce whenever they desire. Women play the victim successfully throughout their lives in order to achieve various objectives such as financial gain, receiving attention, or avoiding consequences. Women en masse are now raising young boys to believe they are evil and toxic. They are on a mission to devalue and obliterate all facets of traditional masculinity. I think everyone at this point has an idea of what's been happening in the public school systems in Western nations, which are overwhelmingly run by women. Men are routinely portrayed in the media as incompetent, overly aggressive, and unethical. Meanwhile, women are most often portrayed as virtuous, peaceful, and highly competent. It is women who very often manipulate men to become violent on their behalf, while simultaneously perpetuating the narrative that all men are needlessly aggressive and destructive. In reality, however, women are just as aggressive and perhaps even more destructive. How many men are assaulted or murdered by other men over a woman? Look up the statistics. Women are quite simply trained from birth to become master manipulators. Modern women in the West currently enjoy more options, support, and privilege than any man throughout history. Still, do you think there's a patriarchy? 
give me a break. Feminists have been training women to be men. That's pretty much a prerequisite for a professional career these days. But it's also a formula for failure in your personal life. A feminine woman and a man go together like a nut and a bolt. A masculine woman and a man go together like two bolts. The masculine professional woman may disguise her masculine nature to get married, but eventually it will express itself as competition with the man for dominance and control in the family. That leads to divorce for irreconcilable differences, not surprisingly. The fact is that women trying to be masculine in a home is what leads to high divorces. Men and women have distinct roles. They should complement each other and not compete. Men head the home. Women support as helpers. If Western women want to pursue their own path, men will get passports for foreign women who are best trained to be feminine and have less pain and stress. What most older women also don't realize is that no decent man would enter into a relationship with them when they're so desperate. As a man, the last thing you want to do is involve someone in your life because, in her eyes, you'll do. The truth is that nearly every woman I've tried to approach in my life has tried to gaslight me into thinking I'm worthless and not good enough. It took me a long time to overcome the damage done to my confidence and self-esteem, and I've actually come to the conclusion I can't be around people like that. What sort of monster makes another person feel terrible for merely approaching them and wanting to get to know them? It's sickening. The hardest part of growing up as a man is a horrible realization that women aren't as nice as we've been made to believe. It's a difficult pill to swallow, especially for a former optimist. And this is what I've basically seen in the last decade. Attractive women overestimate their value and then end up having three kids by the time they're 30 thinking that will trap the man of their dreams, they usually find themselves raising those kids at the taxpayer's expense. This happens generation after generation, and they never learn. In today's world, it is difficult for you to find an ideal partner, because most people care about material things, formalities, and appearances. I searched for a long time for true love, for the pure essence, for tenderness, and I did not find it and her child became my moon and he became her son. But I did not find it, and yet I still believe that love exists and that it is a very great thing. It needs to be taught to all young women, straight from school, that they have a limited shelf life in terms of reproduction, and there's a sweet spot when they are most fertile, and they need to seriously consider their options before it's too late. Awareness campaigns need to be made common to high school students so they know the deal and the lonesome sad future that awaits them if they go the route of career or job over being a mother and wife. The modern Western woman is no longer an ideal worth fighting or protecting. Just get out of the way. The best way to defend yourself from a punch is to make sure you are not present when it comes to a strike. I have also learned that women prefer money above all other considerations. The guy can be handsome, young, have many skills, have a good personality, is a great conversationalist, and why not, a great lover. But they don't have as much money as the woman. B. They are worth less, in real terms, than that woman, and therefore he's not a good mate. The whole idea of strong and independent women is based on an extreme level of feminism that promote male oppression and women take over control of their entire life. In an act of revenge against all the women who have been oppressed by men throughout history. It doesn't make sense, and it has far-reaching negative consequences for the idea of a family, which is on the decline in the Western world. Fact is, women do need men. Most of them realize that too late when they're past the wall hitting their mid-40s and realizing they're missing a big chunk of life. This is not a feminist point of view. Women have always gone after men who had more money than they do. That's human history. Now they, being strong, independent feminists, also only want a man who has more money. Isn't there some kind of peak in their thinking? They're using the same thinking as all women before them in history. It really is only about money, so they want to have the richer guys, which are what women always wanted. How is that feminist? 
I wonder how many great guys have been discarded because the woman reached an enlightened stage where she wanted what every woman in history has wanted and now, being near the end of their reproductive cycle, they find going it alone not being everything it's cracked up to be. Isn't that weird? Women might get a kick out of saying stuff like they're strong and independent and need no men. But believe me, the day men actually stopped caring, supporting, financing, and obliging women, they're all going to start wondering what they're going to do with their lives because nothing would work. Will women build the roads? Will they keep the electricity grids running? Will they ensure the sewerage system works? Will public transport function? I don't think so. Society will collapse. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. And let us know your thoughts on this in the comments. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.